Uh, my name is Ken Bennett. I live here in Prescott. And my name is Nika Dean, and I also live in Prescott. So what interested you in Yavapai College? Well, growing up uh, in Prescott, uh, what interested me is to be able to go on to higher education um, after high school, but also continue to live at home and keep the expenses down. Uh, I knew that I was going to uh, do a two-year missionary thing for, for my church after about a year of college. So going off to some other place um, didn't make a whole lot of sense. I had a good relationship with my parents and family, and I was the oldest. So uh, staying at home and living at home and being able to come here and get some of my college courses done was probably the biggest uh, attraction. Plus, uh, you grew up in Prescott. You're a fan of... Most of us were fans of Yavapai College. We kind of looked for those days after graduating from high school that, um, you know, we'd come be a Rough Rider, so. Very nice. Yeah. What was it like living with your parents and then doing college? Well, it was, it was um, my first, or one of my first experiences, I guess, in transitioning into real, true adulthood where... You know, they didn't tell me to go to class, and I didn't have a specific, you know, get on the bus and go to high school or drive to school or all that stuff. So, you know, it was nice. Uh, it was um, a next normal step of a little bit more freedom. You know, mm -hmm. set your own schedule and got to register for classes. You got to be there and all that stuff. So I enjoyed it and um, had good classes and enjoyed coming. And but it was nice to. The, the worst part about um, about it was that my transportation my first year was a motorcycle. Oh, no. And so during the winters of what would have been 77, 78, um, on cold winter mornings, uh, I had to bundle up pretty pretty heavy in order to not be frozen when I got to my first class. But as I recall, I think my first class, or my earliest class, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I think was uh, freshman comp, composition, freshman English with, um, see, I had Dorothy Galdi, I remember, was the teacher. And uh, there were times when I'd come in just almost frozen. But uh, that was the worst part about uh, going to school um, and living at home, is that my transportation was a motorcycle and it was a little cold. Was there any really funny or interesting memories of that class? Because of, of the motorcycle? Of that class? Oh, no, I don't think... I don't recall, I had kind of a tendency to be a couple of minutes late to class, and that kind of became a standing joke. But, um, Did it? <laughs> yeah. But otherwise, I don't think, um, I don't remember anything too crazy about, about that. I knew Mrs. Galdi a little bit because I had had her husband as a teacher in the fifth grade. Oh. Uh, there, he, he taught at Miller Valley School here in Prescott. And he wasn't my main teacher. There were two or three fifth grade teachers. and mm -hmm. Actually, he was fourth grade. Yeah, he was fourth grade. I was assigned in one class, but that was back in the era where they would divide the math groups up into different levels. And depending on which level of math you were in, you would go with one of the fourth grade teachers and the other groups would go with different ones. So for an hour or two a day, I was in Mr. Galdi's fourth grade class for, I think it was math or... Uh, social studies, I don't remember exactly. but uh, So I knew Mr. Galdi and thought it neat and interesting that, that I got uh, Dorothy Galdi when I got here to Yavapai. Were they similar to each other, or do you remember? Uh, similar in many respects. Uh, very quiet and dignified, um, <laughs> but fair, and uh, they didn't put up with a whole lot of... Um, <laughs> rabble rousing in their classes so uh, so they seemed they were both older both yeah. at the, when I was in fifth grade with Mr. Galdi and and then with Dorothy she was getting quite advanced in her career and I don't think she taught many more years after that but uh, they both excellent teachers and both very dignified and, and quiet in their demeanor so that they must have rubbed off on each other over the years or something must have yeah so were you interested in like school activities as well because you were in the president's honor? Was that what you were in? Well, I had almost as a afterthought 
um, filled out a, a scholarship application at Prescott High School that was the president's scholarship or something, oh. meaning they have a Pike College president. And I really wasn't expecting... I had good grades in, in high school and was in the Honor Society and, and all of that, but um, somehow was awarded a, a president's scholarship. I think it was like $500 a semester. But at that time, that cover, I think I even got a little cash back. By the yeah. time I paid for my tuition and, and books and everything, I got a $15 check or refund back. So, <laughs> uh, so it was nice that you know I got to go the first year. It was almost all paid for. Um, and I had, you know, I had looked forward to being a part of Yavapai College as a child growing up in the Prescott area. I was probably seven or eight years old when the college was founded. Yeah. Um, and it actually played, I remember my earliest memory of Yavapai College was the fact that, or was around the idea that Prescott was really something now because it had an indoor swimming pool. <laughs> And that really, you know, for a lot of the younger kids in town, we thought we had kind of gone up in the world somehow a notch or two because we now had a, a indoor swimming pool in town and it was Olympic size and all this stuff. And, uh, but my earliest and most uh, poignant and terrifying at times uh, experience with Yavapai College was around the swimming pool because... Um, and as I got to be 12 or 13 years old, I was in Boy Scouts. <laughs> and the two merit badges that almost kept me from getting my Eagle Scout was swimming and life-saving. And I was not a good swimmer. Um, I mean, I swam like a rock. I, I'd go in the water, and all I wanted to do was go to the bottom. Uh, I was skinny, as I still am maybe a little bit, but very thin not a whole lot of air in my lungs and so when I sw swimming was not something that came real natural to me and the swimming and life-saving merit badges included um, some tasks that just about I thought I was going to die so <laughs> some of my most terrifying memories of it, of it being a child was in the Avapai College pool trying to earn my swimming and life-saving merit badge so that was kind of a unique early nice. memory about have a bike college. One, uh, one task that you had to do in life saving is you had to dive into 10 feet of water and, uh, and retrieve an object that I think had to weigh like 15 or 20 pounds off the bottom of the pool. And I think they used a big uh, brick that they put in a bag or something or a sack. And I probably only weighed about 85 or 90 pounds myself. So I, I can remember that I, I was scared to swim, so I wasn't a good swimmer. I knew I wasn't a good swimmer. And the idea of going underwater to try to get something scared me, so I'd take this big deep breath. Well, then I would have some air in my lungs, and I'd have to fight like the Dickens to get down to the bottom of the pool. Um, and it was tough for me to just swim down and touch the bottom of the pool and have enough air to get back up. So I'd, I'd dive in and... I didn't like to open my eyes underwater either, so I'm diving in to get this brick, and I was almost out of air by the time I got to the bottom. And I grabbed this brick, and I went to go back up, and it didn't move. It was that heavy to me. I was so small. And by the time I got it lifted up and swam back, I thought my lungs were going to cave in, and I just about, that was my first experience in thinking that I was ever going to die. That's terrifying. Was when I was, oh, it was a terrifying <laughs> experience, and I had to do that to earn this merit badge. And I had, it was a required merit badge or I wasn't going to get my little Eagle Scout badge. So that's my, that's my most vivid, one of my most vivid memories of childhood was almost dying in the Yavapai College pool. So, oh man, that's so, really scary. Yeah. I can do that. Most of my, most of the rest of my experience at Yavapai was a little more positive than that. I would hope so. <laughs> oh jeez, was it the pin big or was it like teeny weeny little nothing? What, the eagle? No, yeah. the eagle, you know, it's the highest honor in, eagle, in Boy Scouts and and so it was it was worth it. Yeah. Um, in fact, it, it's one of the things that I feel, I still put that on my resumes even to this day. Really? When I ran for office and I would get more comments from potential voters who had, you know, seen a brochure mm -hmm. or would hear me speak or hear 
about me or read about me or whatever, that I had more people, you know, uh, a degree, you know, a college degree in accounting or so many years of business experience or so many years on the city count. You know, all of those were nice, but the thing I got the most compliments about from voters who would come up to me and say, I don't know much about you, I just listened to you speak, and I got your brochure, and one of the things that tells me the most about you is you're an Eagle Scout. And th that, th that told me how much respect being an Eagle Scout garnered, because, um, <laughs> you know, years later, um, that's what people would often single out on my brochures and things like that, is that I was an Eagle Scout. I think all the men who have walked on the moon were Eagle Scouts. <laughs> you think so? I, no, I, I think that's a. I think that's the truth. No, it's not a prereq in, to get into the astronaut program, but it just so happened that um, all of the astronauts that ended up being on the missions that went to the moon were Eagle Scouts. Wow. So. Why did you pick a business degree of all things to get? Well, uh, my. My family had been in business here in town for many years. My great-grandparents had a dairy here back in the 20s and 30s. Uh, then my grandparents on my mom's side got into the um, service station business, selling gasoline and diesel and oil and things like that. And so as a boy, my parents bought that business from them in the 60s. Uh, they started with their first, uh, Grandma and Grandpa started with their first station in the late 30s. Um, my parents bought the business from them in the early 60s, and so I grew up driving trucks and delivering gasoline and diesel to uh, customers around Yavapai County, and I wanted a degree that would be helpful if I chose to go into the family business. I had an uncle who was an accountant, and I really admired him. He was one of the younger uncles that was closer in age to me. Uh, but still older enough that I really idolized him. And so somehow he picked accounting as a degree. And so I was pretty good at math and, and wanted to do something that if I chose to go into the family business, it would be of some benefit to the business as well. Um, and, you know, always enjoyed a nice lifestyle that my, my dad's business uh, endeavors allowed our family to live. And, and so... Um, I wanted to be in business in one form or another and ended up deciding to go into the family business. So my accounting degree, uh, which I took several courses here at Yavapai, I didn't graduate because of that interruption on my church missionary thing. Yeah. I had a year here, and then when I came back, I got back from Japan in, I think it was like October or something. So the fall semester had already started. I didn't <laughs> couldn't register until the spring. So I only was here for a year and one more semester, and then I transferred down to SU. But took some accounting courses here at Yavapai, and that proved to be a good uh, degree and a good skill to have when I did go to work in the family business and started doing a lot of their accounting and stuff like that. Hmm. So that's why I chose a business degree, because I was <laughs> going to be a business man, I guess. Yeah. How were your math teachers? What were they like since you did accounting? Well, the math, um, I can remember that one of my math, my college algebra class was one of those where you go in and it's kind of a self-progress thing. You just try to follow through and there's a teacher's assistant. I don't even remember who my math teacher was um, because college algebra was, was one of those self-directed courses, in which... For some reason, I have the recollection that that was kind of a new phenomenon at that time, and I don't know if they've continued that or gone into other approaches. Uh, the main courses that were associated with accounting were, in fact, the accounting courses that I took here. I remember I had um, Bob, uh, Robert Sweeney was my instructor uh, for my first accounting class. That was 77 and 78. And then when I got back from Japan, I had Tom Snavely, who's still here. At the, he's the gentleman that we... Bumped oh, yeah. in the other day. Yes. Said he's been here for 31 years. So, so I've, in fact, I have had, I think I had, at least two or three instructors back in the late 70s who are still here <laughs> at the college today. Mr. Snavely, um, I had uh, Jim Hinton, hmm. who I think still teaches here. I had Jim.
for uh, criminal justice. I took a course in criminal justice. So. But I think one of the neat things about Yavapai College was the intimacy of the class sizes and the relationships you could have with teachers. Um, you know, as I ended up eventually down at ASU, I would end up in some of these large econ classes with three or four hundred kids in them. And I literally don't know that I could tell you the name. Maybe I could probably tell you the name of one or two professors that I had at ASU. Um, but I can probably tell you 90% of the teachers that I had at Yavapai College. That's a big difference. Yeah. And uh, I even had them prior to being at ASU. So, you know, as far as time-wise goes, uh, I should have forgotten their names mm -hmm. before I forgot the ASU teachers. But that was one of the, I think, the most important aspects of my education at Yavapai, and I think anyone's here, is that you have smaller class sizes, you have a better, more intimate relationship opportunity with your instructors. Um, and I had very good instructors, and um, I, I thought I got a very good education here. Do you remember, Was did you have like a favorite teacher in particular that you remember? Like somebody who was really favorite good? Favorite teacher? Um, well, I enjoyed Charles Domena's, um business class. Uh, he taught a, a general business class, uh, and he was a prominent local businessman who had th two or three uh, businesses here in town. Um, so I enjoyed his class. So I, he knew what he was talking about. Yeah. Yeah, and you knew that he not only had the academic background, but he had the practical day-to-day. -day. Uh, I was real involved in, uh, I've always enjoyed music throughout my life, so I enjoyed uh, a couple of music classes that I had. Um, uh, let's see, there was uh, Rich Longfield um, and then Jim Burns were a couple of the uh, music teachers here at the time. Um, what other classes? I enjoyed Mr. Hinton's criminal justice class. Um, I think that was probably because there was a girl that I sat next to that <laughs> I liked at the time. But uh, I also enjoyed Jim's classes. Uh, Mr. Haynes. I had Mr. Haynes for uh, uh, freshman English. He was one of the other semesters uh, with Mrs. G Galdi. Um, I had uh, Evan Ragsdale for sociology. He was kind of a character and was here for a long time. <laughs> Big frizzy hairdo from kind of the 70s look. Um, my accounting courses, obviously I was focused on those. But, so I don't recall uh, having probably my basketball class. That, <laughs> basketball yeah, class? I had a class in basketball that we had to play <laughs> a couple times a week, and that was fun. But I don't remember having one class that stuck out that much more than the others, but uh, mm -hmm. probably the business class with uh, Domena okay. and the criminal justice with Hinton. So even while you were taking business, you were still really interested in government? Well, I knew that I, I had a government interest. My dad was on the city council, um, I think even during that time. Wow. When I was attending, about the time I graduated from high school, if I, don't, if I remember correctly, is when my dad got elected to the city council. And I had been involved in student government, you know, being on the student council, things like that, in junior high. And I wasn't on in high school, but I knew I had an interest in government. Then when I went to Japan for a couple of years and had the opportunity to see other cultures. Mm -hmm. I really developed an appreciation for what America was and what it afforded us as Americans and citizens. And so that kind of solidified my interest. And so, yeah, I was starting to um, explore and discover an interest in government um, about that time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember uh, I met one of my first politicians uh, up in the student union um, who, came, who came through town, I'm sure, one day and just wanted to visit students and whatever. That was Evan Meekham, who lost that year for governor. He, he lost four or five times <laughs> in an attempt to be the governor, uh, at, but then later in his career finally succeeded. 
uh, although it didn't turn out too well that, uh, after that. But. <laughs> so, but I can, I can remember meeting him as a young freshman here at Yavapai College. He came to town one day. So I was starting to develop an interest in government at that time. That's great. I hope they do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like that very much. Yeah. Well, maybe when I run in three years, I'll come by. Mm, that's a good idea. <laughs> What was the social scene here for a student? Since you were off campus, you didn't have the lousy, the noisy, loud horns. What was yeah, I, uh, I didn't really associate my social life that much with YC because, you know, I essentially came to my classes. Yeah. Um, I spent a fair amount of time in the student union playing uh, ping pong and, <laughs> and uh, pinball. Um, became quite proficient at ping pong. In fact, I was one of the better ping pong players on campus, uh, other than the tennis players. At that time, we had a boys' tennis, men's tennis team. And uh, obviously, they, you know, it's a similar motion or whatever, table yeah. tennis, but uh, they were, ex they were most of them very good tennis, or uh, <laughs> ping pong players, but uh, I could beat most of them about half the time. I mean, we were about equal, but everybody else in the student union, I could I could uh, usually take care of, but um, <laughs> so I spent a lot of time during the day, in between classes or over the lunch hour or things like that. Uh, the social scene really stayed, at least for me, back into my tied into the family, my other many friends that I had had here in town, growing up, you know, in Prescott uh, Church and and just the network of friends that I had at the time. So um, probably didn't go to as many of the on-campus activities and things like that. I was an avid attender at basketball games and, <laughs> and uh, you know, some baseball games and things like that But because I was into sports. But I wasn't good enough to be uh, a Rough Rider athlete, but uh, I was not too far behind them. But, <laughs> so. but the social scene for me was usually spending a few hours a day up in the student union playing ping pong and pinball. So. Did a lot of your high school friends end up going to Yavapai College? Not school? very many. It was kind of a surprising, uh, there weren't that many. Unfortunately, and maybe that's still the case now, that there were a lot of my um, colleagues at Prescott High School that, you know, had developed this idea, which I did not have at all, <laughs> that, you know, Prescott was this terrible, small little town that yeah. there's nothing to do and and I got to get out of here as fast as I can. So a lot of them went off to other places. Of course, a lot of the athletes that I knew in high school were a little bit better than me, and they did go on to play at other junior colleges and that. And but I don't recall um, feeling like there was a large group of my close friends that were attending Yavapai. I don't know why I don't have that impression, or whether that was a true impression, but. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember, or at least I wasn't in class with a lot of, <laughs> of uh, kids that I'd known at Prescott High. Wow, that's changed a lot. Since Has it? Yeah, okay. there's a lot of high school students now. Uh-huh. Maybe graduated from a high school and are now. Come, and come over here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, the, and maybe that percentage was about the same back then, too, and maybe I just ended up not being in some of the classes uh, with them, but, uh, Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Do you remember, like, what the campus was like, or campus the was basically uh, the four main buildings. The four main. Yeah. Um, as you walked in, there were the stairs. There were two or three levels of stairs. You didn't have the gradual um, walkway coming up the way it does. Yeah. Um, Obviously, the bit, the first building on the left was the gymnasium and the pool. Hmm. I assume that that's still the same. The first building on the right was uh, the executive offices, um, and I think most of the business classes were in there. Hmm. Um, the building that we're in right now, which was up to the top of the buildings and to the left yeah. was the library. That was primarily the library. <laughs> and uh, that, the library was on the first floor 
and there were classrooms up on the second floor, and I had several classes up uh, on the floor above the library. Uh, and then the top right building, um, I think was math and science. I, I didn't have a whole lot of math and science, <laughs> or I didn't have a whole lot of science courses. But um, And then the, uh, where was the st student union was on the second floor of the first building, but you entered up at that higher level. And so you came up a couple of flights of stairs, went to your right, you went into the bookstore. The bookstore was up there by the student union, the cafeteria. All of that was, I think, on the second floor of the first building to the right. But most of the campus, if I recall correctly, were those four main buildings. And then I think they were starting to develop some of the um, automotive and industrial buildings oh. over on the east side of campus. So, I remember there started to be some, but they were like Quonset Hut type um, buildings and they weren't really, um, or I didn't think of them as full-fledged buildings. <laughs> Most of the, to me, the, the structure of the college was the four main buildings. It didn't have a um, performance hall or any type of an auditorium. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the... The, um, they had the baseball field. Uh, the dorms were down where I think they essentially still are. <laughs> but uh, mainly it was the four main buildings. Hmm. Interesting. Now I get invited to meetings, and you know, and, and <laughs> like I had one today, and it was in building 32, room Aww. 119. And I thought, my heck, we only had four buildings, so it was easy <laughs> to find things back then. Have you gone underneath the theater yet? There's tons of classrooms underneath the theater. Under the performance hall? It's not quite underneath. It's like there's backstage and then there's a bunch. Oh, I didn't know that. On the second floor of the backstage. No, it's didn't crazy. Know that. <laughs> no, didn't know that. So you really liked basketball. Did you, you said you went to a bunch of games. Did you go with friends or did you go by yourself and meet people? No, no, no. Uh, I did go with friends. Um... I was active in our little church group of yeah. college-age kids and things like that. Um, so we'd go to games, um, but we weren't the most boisterous, uh, loud and crazy fan group. That <laughs> we had some pretty loud fans at the time, and that was, I think, some of the early beginnings of the, of the Rough Rider experience of being at loud basketball games and pounding on the things. But... <laughs> yeah, usually went with small groups of friends and go to DQ afterwards, get an ice cream or something. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. So you lived pretty close to the college, right? No, actually my family lived out Iron Springs Road, oh. uh, kind of out by, well, it's called the Meadow Ridge area. Uh, it's just past the Walmart Mall type area out there. Oh, man. So uh, it was out there and... Well, we weren't too far. I mean, the whole town wasn't, yeah. or didn't feel that big to start with. So, I mean, driving across town wasn't that big of a deal. Just in the winter, we were yeah, cold just in the winter snowing. when you're on your motorcycle, <laughs> ten degrees. Did you end up getting a car during that one little semester you were here, or were you still on the little motorcycle? When I came back from Japan, I think I did have a. Tr I somehow inherited or was given a. An old '58 Ford pickup truck by my parents, so. Fun. And I, <laughs> I drove that, I think. So that was a little better than the motorcycle. At least it kept the wind off me. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> In fact, I think I had that vehicle available to me had I pushed the issue <laughs> during that first year. Um, but I had bought a motorcycle with my own funds uh -huh. and was trying to establish my independence, and so, you know. <laughs> you got to ride it, then, yeah. if you bought it. <laughs> you, if you bought something, you got to ride it, so. Did you get to take the motorcycle with you to Japan? Oh, no. No? No. <laughs> what else? Did you get to see, like, the Japanese schools at all? Did you get to compare it um, to Pai? Not really. Um, you know, we were there primarily for the purpose of proselyting on behalf of our church and yeah. and whatever and 
that really doesn't go very well in schools. In schools, <laughs> be interrupting people from their studies. But one thing we did do: um, the Japanese liked basketball, and they liked almost anything American. <laughs> and our we were organized uh, as far as missionaries, and most of us were 19, 20 year old young men. Um, and so, if we had any level of concentration, if, if there were eight or ten of us in one of the bigger or medium sized cities, uh, and most cities in Japan are pretty good sized, but so in almost any city, you could there were eight or ten of us. Um, we usually lived in pairs, but uh, or actually we used to have four per apartment. And so, if you had you know two or three apartment groups in a city of any size. Then there were eight or ten or twelve of us, um, and we would do basketball games. We'd go around and challenge the Japanese community colleges <laughs> to kind of like pick up basketball games. But they were big for them because here were these Americans yeah. um, playing a game that was really thought of as being an American game. <laughs> and... Uh, but they had gotten pretty good at it. But So we had these groups of missionaries that would go around to the different universities and, community, and colleges in Japan mm -hmm. and play whatever best team they could come up with. <laughs> Basketball hadn't gotten to the point where universities or colleges had college teams like we have here. Hmm. But it was more like an intramural level. <laughs> and within their intramural system, they knew who the best either players or the better of the teams mm -hmm. were. And so they would have uh, tournaments within their intramural system to figure out who got to play the Americans. <laughs> and then we would have these uh, basketball tournaments. And so that was the main interaction I had uh, with, with colleges and universities in Japan while I was doing my missionary stuff. Uh, most of the rest of the time we were, you know, going door to door, meeting people in public um, parks or whatever and just <laughs> trying to get to know them and share some of our ideas and uh, we did a lot of service projects trying to help people who are in need and, and what so mainly my experience with Japanese universities and colleges was playing basketball in these intramural <laughs> tournaments that they had. So when you came back you said that you got a new appreciation for our government but what else did you get from it when you came back and how did it affect from you? From the Japanese experience? Yeah. Well, it gave me a level of confidence and, and independence. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to take care of myself for four year or two years and and lived on my own with other missionaries. I mean, like I say, we usually lived in a group of four. Um, but you had to take care of eating, and feeding, and clothing, and washing dishes, and <laughs> washing clothes, and all those things that um, mom used to do. You know, most of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. when you were a kid. And so probably the biggest thing it did is is that it made me more independent and self-reliant and um, and then that was helpful when I got you know when I got back into school. I think my academic performance after my missionary experience was a little better than before because I spent too many hours in the student union I think, <laughs> the first year. You had too much fun. Yeah, I think I did. <laughs> I was good. So I think I got mostly B's and a couple A's or something. But. So good. <laughs> well, I've been pretty much a straight A student in high school, but I didn't develop educa or, uh, academic challenges in high school, at least Arizona high schools at that time. Wasn't that challenging to me? Mm. I didn't have to take a lot of homework home. Really? I could get most of my stuff done in class, do pretty well on tests. I was, you know, almost a straight A student in high school without developing good study habits. <laughs> And that that cost me um, in college. So you had to learn how to do that. Yeah, I took me a while to learn how to do that. Oh. <laughs> to discipline myself to do that. That's understandable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Was there anything else you really remember about Yavapai College? Like maybe an experience you had, a good one, a oh. bad one? Besides yeah, the pool. <laughs> Besides the yeah. Uh, <laughs> um... Boy, you know, for some reason, nothing stands out as um, as an overwhelming experience above and beyond everything else. Mm. Um, 
I didn't meet my wife here, or you know, that would have probably been uh, the most significant. I met her down at ASU. Um, no, I just have surprisingly vivid memories, even 30 years later, um, of being in the classrooms with teachers. Um, and I just get these pictures in my mind that float back, and I can, it's like it was yesterday, sitting or standing in class having conversations with different teachers or whatever. So for some reason, I don't have one standout memory or experience. Um, probably the biggest experience in retrospect is when I transferred down to ASU um, and requested that my transcripts be sent down. They didn't have any record that I had ever attended school. No. Uh, whoa, 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 I just spent a year and a half there. Um, oh, no. And they, I didn't exist. I mean, no credits, no. Oh. And uh, I finally found out after doing some research that somehow I had picked up my mom's social security oh. number when I had originally registered that first semester. I don't know why we made that mistake or whatever, but oh, no. I originally got registered under my mom's social security number, which at the time was what they usually used for your student ID yeah. number. And so all of my credits were under uh, her social security number. So when I got down to ASU and applied under, somehow by that time, I had started using my social security <laughs> number correctly. and. Uh, so I enroll at ASU and I request all my transcripts and nothing comes back. Then we went through this big process of figuring out that all of my credits were, were under my mom's social security number. So uh, that was probably the most significant memory I have is when I tried to transfer down to ASU and didn't have any credits because I was using the wrong social security number. How did you end up fixing that? Well, <laughs> somehow, I, it probably wasn't that tough, but I eventually proved that, you know, this is my name and this is who I am. I just was using the wrong social security number. And so somehow they went back through and I remember I spent several hours in the registrar's office oh. uh, trying to correct all that stuff. So we finally got it corrected and they got all those credits attached to the correct social security number and, and I was able to go on with my education. What a mess. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> I remember uh, having... Um, being able to walk in just almost any time and visit with the president of the college. At Yampa? Yeah. Wow. Who uh, was Joe Russo at the time, <laughs> and he knew my parents, and and I think he had been a teacher and or a coach of my dad in high school. <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, that's the kind of intimacy that being a student at Yavapai College afforded someone back then, is that, you know, if I saw him... You know, around his office area, he'd invite me in and ask how things were going, and that was kind of neat and special to, you know, be at a place where you were getting a good education. It was big enough and and professional enough that it w it actually was every bit as good an education as what I would as the courses I would later take at ASU, but small enough that you could have those kinds of experiences with your professors or or even the president of the university, so, or the college, so. Do you remember a conversation you had with him at all, or? Oh, not, not specifically. Mostly he was just talking about how I was doing, and, and <laughs> but I just remember that during that year that I was here that first uh, couple semesters, there were two or three times when I just ended up in his office talking about <laughs> whatever we talked about, sports or the town or family or whatever, so. So you enjoyed basketball. Did you go to any other sports events? Well, about the only other ones that I can recall were the baseball games. Baseball. Um, see, we had a men's tennis team at the time. Uh, I think there was even a cross-country team. Um, I think women's basketball was, uh, was up and going. I was mainly interested in them. I had a couple of guys in my classes that were on the basketball team. Mm -hmm. And I had, you know, if I could have changed the three or four years of high school uh, where I got cut from the varsity basketball team, much to my chagrin, 
Of course, that also... Oh, golf, and I think they had a golf, a golf team. <laughs> but those golf, some of those sports don't lend them, themselves to watching. But uh, no, I went to a lot of basketball games, a few baseball games. Mm. But I think it was about that time that Yavapai won one of their first national championships for in for baseball. Bas- baseball. Baseball. Oh. Yeah. So there wasn't any soccer at all. There was no soccer. No, soccer. no huh. that would come. Um, that would come much later, I think, in the. Maybe mid to late 80s is when the soccer program started, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so well, there's no soccer. Um, I don't remember, it seemed like there might have been some volleyball, women's volleyball. I don't remember there being men's volleyball. And there wasn't any drama at all because they didn't have the performing arts theater? Well, they didn't have the performing hall that is that we now have. But yeah, there, no, there were drama classes. Hmm. Um... I don't recall going to many performances, but I think they did them either down at one of the facilities downtown, either the Elks Theater oh, okay. or the Prescott Fine Arts <laughs> um, places where they, and they may have even done some over at the, the high school. Actually, the high school really didn't even have a performance hall. Really? A lot of things happened at uh, Prescott. It was called Prescott Junior High at the time. It's now Mile High Middle School. Oh. That was, it, it was either Elks Theater or the auditorium at um, Prescott Junior High. Hmm. That's where most uh, performances type things were, were done. You said but I don't remember going to many, mm-hmm. especially sponsored by the college. I, <laughs> I wasn't into that scene as much yeah. as maybe I should have been. You're more into the sports. I was into sports, yeah. That's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you took music classes? Did you play an instrument or was it music theory? What was it? I, um, I played uh, a couple of instruments. <laughs> I played the guitar and the violin. Oh, wow. So I was in the orchestra for a couple of semesters, if I remember correctly. Um, didn't take a, I had had guitar with private instructors when I was growing up. Um, I remember being in the choir one year or one semester. It was in orchestra, uh, but then I took a couple of like music appreciation courses. Mm-hmm. Um, is what I had with Mr. Longfield. So was the music classes kind of like your fun classes, and then there's other um, classes from more than one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But music was a very important part of my life. As I think back. Um, And I've been asked this question in committees that I've served on where we were setting (laughs) academic standards for graduating from high school in the state of Arizona and things when I was on the State Board of Education. Um, I've actually been in committees where they asked us, you know, what was the most important or impactful uh, course or courses that you had in your educational experience. And as I sat there and thought about it, it, I realized that my music courses, both at the high school or at middle school or junior high, it was junior high when I was there, junior and high school level and college, uh, some of the most impactful courses in my life have been my music courses. Wow. Even though that wasn't my major and it wasn't, because it just helped me develop the skills that I had started uh, c- kind of privately with a couple of instruments that I played. but. Um, it developed. I developed a, an ability to sing a little bit. My wife and I have sung together for years, ever since. Mm-hmm. Um, I sang to my daughter every night uh, to put her to bed for probably a dozen years. Um, and so when I think about what's really made a difference and the biggest difference in my life, music uh, is one of the top ones, if not the... That's great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you remember any of the choir cl- that choir class you took? Nope. Not much. I remember singing a few songs. I remember we sang part of uh, Handel's Messiah one year. Oh, did you? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That must have been fun. It was. What section were you? Well, I was a baritone. A baritone? Um, so, but a lot of times you ended up either in the bass or the tenor, and you, <laughs> if, if there was a baritone part... <laughs> You'd get lucky and get yeah, it. Yeah, you'd get lucky and get it. Um, and then one year, I think, I was in the orchestra in the violin section. Um, 
as the backup or as the instrumental instrumental um, part for the, for the Messiah. Did they have like chair placements in your orchestra? Yeah, but Dr. Kuhn, uh, who was a local, uh, I think he's a physician here in town. He was always the first chair. So was he? Yeah, I, I didn't even try to. <laughs> you didn't even try. No. Do you remember what chair you got at all? Oh, I think it was like third or fourth or That's something. Pretty good but, still, though. but I didn't. I didn't aspire, nor did I <laughs> feel like I had. I probably aspired, but I knew that I didn't have the talent to overcome uh, the ones in front of me. So I just didn't practice enough, and so. Well, did you? If I'd have practiced my violin yeah. as much and hard as I practiced basketball, I probably could have been a very good violinist. Really. I spent a lot of time playing basketball, but I just didn't have the. Um, physical uh, faculties to the height. to get to the next level. Yeah, I was short <laughs> um, for, for basketball standards. Yeah. Six, six one, and yeah, I, and, and I can't jump. I've got white man's <laughs> disease. So. You got what? White man's disease. <laughs> I think there's a song or a movie or something. White men can't jump. <laughs> there probably yeah. is. <laughs> so I can't jump. That's great. Do you remember, like, in your classes, did you have a lot of mixed ages groups? Like, you'd have maybe yours, and then, do you have retirees, too? A few, but most of them were college age, you know, oh. in their 20s. Hmm. Late teens, or early 20s. Um, Mr. Domena's uh, business class had a few, had a broader range of, oh. of people in there, because it was one of those more practical type classes. Um... But most of the classes were, as I recall, um, the accounting. I think the accounting classes had maybe some um, a broader range of, of students in there. Hmm. But my recollection is that most of the classes I was in was uh, younger students like me. And how big did, were the classes? Were they, they? You said they were small, but do like was it twenty people? Oh. Some of them, 20 was big. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I think I can remember a, an accounting class where we had eight. <laughs> which, I don't know how they paid for that class, but anyway. Mm -mm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they were pretty small. Hmm. I think with the biggest class I had, probably the biggest class was uh, the freshman comp, freshman oh. English classes, or... <laughs> um, Mr. Hinton's criminal justice class was pretty full. He probably had 30, 40 students <laughs> in that class. Wow, that is quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So do you have people come up to you today and talk about you have to play college a lot with you? Or like uh, not, a not a lot. Um, but I enjoy, um, one of the fun things that I did later in my uh, career, um, I helped to form the first... Uh, alumni Association. Oh, did you? And one of the activities that we were crazy enough to come up with uh, at the time was that we did an alumni versus faculty <laughs> basketball game no. uh, during the halftime of the men's basketball <laughs> game. And That's great. So I ended up on the alumni team, and for a couple years in a row, we had a... Um, um, Alumni versus faculty game, and we were able. We the alumni were able, we were probably, you know, eight or ten years out of school out of school by then. Yeah. We were in our late twenties, early thirties, <laughs> um, and we the alumni won both years. That I recall we had that little contest. <laughs> that was fun, um, but I it's neat to run into you know run into a lot of people that if you talk to them for a few minutes you realize that uh, you know they were. <laughs> alums of Yavapai College, and um, you know, I ended up playing softball one year with uh, Mike Panaglione, the <laughs> soccer coach. We ended up on a city league softball team together <laughs> here together. Um, so I, I do meet a lot of people that if we talk about things for a while, we discover that we are both alums of Yavapai College. That's a great question. Okay. Why did you decide to form the alumni? Like, how did you do that? Well, it wasn't my idea. I, I think somebody wanted to form an alumni association, and I 
trying to think where I was in my political and business career. <laughs> I think I had been on the city council and was maybe on the state board of education at the time, and so had a little bit of uh, prominence or notoriety. And uh, there were a couple of judges or uh, attorneys here in town: Bill Whittington and Kenton Jones. Um, somebody, uh, in fact, I think it was Crystal Erickson was working for the college and kind of got the assignment to see if we could get an alumni association started. And I had known her kind of in the business yeah. uh, arena here in town. and So somehow they picked seven or eight uh, folks in town that they knew to be alumni. alumni and and uh, we started the association. And it kind of went pretty well for a year. I think the college had received a grant that they used for Crystal, some of Crystal's salaries and the expenses and things like that. And it went, went pretty well for a few years and then when the grant expired I think it kind of mm -hmm. faded into the background. But there's a new alumni outreach group mm -hmm. that uh, Barbara Claybaugh uh, among others is working on right now and so I'm back on a committee uh, to try to rejuvenate our <laughs> our alumni association, and hopefully this time it'll be permanent going forward because we're going to do the website thing and you know a way for people to kind of self-identify and get on the website and get on the mailing lists and or the email lists or whatever we're going to have. And hmm. this is the 40th year anniversary, I think that yeah. that they're trying to do something in, in association with that. So, so I was invited to be on the. Uh, alumni, that first alumni group, mm. by somebody who knew me in the business. <laughs> but we had fun. So you're still really involved with this campus, then, huh? Well, uh, not as much as maybe some are, but I've had three children that have attended here. All two, three? Yes, all three wow. of our children have attended Yavapai. Uh, two got degrees. Mm. I have a daughter who got a nursing degree here and is now a labor and delivery nurse wow. down in Mesa. That's great. And she's only 22 years old and has been a registered nurse for a year and a half. That's fantastic. So uh, she's doing very well and and well established in her career and has bought a nice new home and <laughs> here she's 22 years old. And then our youngest son Cliff, mm -hmm. he got an associate's degree here and is now down at the U of A. Uh, our oldest Ryan took some courses here and is up at uh, Brigham Young University but he didn't attend enough courses to get an associate's here, but the other two got their degrees here, so <laughs> so it's an important part of the Bennett family. Apparently so, yeah. wow. <laughs> so, good. That's great. Just a couple more All right, minutes. okay. Do you still like to come and do events here, like watch the basketball games and soccer games, or are you too busy? Well, for the last few years while I've been in the legislature, it's been the eight years so uh, very very busy and just have not taken the time to be here as at m as many of the basketball games <laughs> as I would like I've probably come to one or two a year instead of I used to come to you know several a year um, go to a lot of performances at the um, at the performance hall and um, actually been in a few but <laughs> really? uh, spoke at a <laughs> was the keynote speaker at one of the graduations a couple of years ago, and Very that was cool. that was neat to be a former alum and be asked to give the keynote address. What was that like? It was um, kind of interesting because um, I had an event. I was uh, volunteering with a Boy Scout group. Yeah. Or actually, it was a church youth group, <laughs> and we had an activity down in the Phoenix area. And we all went down in a motorhome that one of the, might have been my parents' motorhome if I'm not, I don't remember. Anyway, we piled everybody into a motorhome so that we could all travel down and back together. And we were supposed to get back at uh, 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I was speaking at 6 o'clock that night. <laughs> and on the way back, the motorhome breaks down. <gasps> oh. Up in North Phoenix. Oh. And we're doing everything we can to get this motorhome. Anyway, it took us two or three hours oh, before no. we finally uh, <laughs> flagged. Somebody driving by recognized us. They were from Prescott. It was the Silvernails that have the Prescott Transit Company over here oh. right next to the college. Um, and 
they saw us broke down and stopped, and somehow we got the 12 or 13 of us into the car or two that they were in. Oh, man. And they got <laughs> us back up here, and I got into town like at about 5.30, mm -hmm. wasn't dressed, and <laughs> so I had to rush home and, and throw all these things together at the last minute. Anyway, it was one of the most unprepared uh, speeches or addresses that I ever felt like I uh, was challenged with doing, but it had a lot of compliments afterwards and turned out all right. But uh, it was a real honor uh, to be asked to to address the graduating students of that year, and and uh, it was a very poignant feeling to know that this had been an important part of my educational experience, and now I was speaking to uh, graduates who had even uh, exceeded my uh, formal uh, <laughs> level of education here because I never did get my degree quite. But uh, mm. anyway, that was fun. <laughs> so um, I still try to be involved as much as I can, but time constraints yeah. don't allow us to <laughs> to do as much as we'd like, probably. That's true. All right. Thank you so that much. That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs>